Touring definitely taught me a lot about how I approach writing music because some things work really well in the live space and some things don't. It meant that I had to go back and uh, rework a lot of my music and uh, think this part would work really well at a festival, this part would work really well at this show. So that's why I have a lot of live edits that I kind of reserve uh, for playing live. And I think touring definitely taught me about that process quite a lot. I made the decision to, to focus on live stuff because I, I enjoy the thrill of uh, the potential of messing everything up. That sounds kind of <laughs> counterintuitive with, with a live set that could just go completely catastrophically wrong. And that was kind of a thrill for me and it, and it made me push myself as a musician. I grew up in a, in a village in Worcester in England. It's kind of uh, close to Wales. There wasn't really a lot going on, there wasn't much to do. So I kind of got into music quite early on. But in terms of electronic music, it was my brother mostly. He was really into like jungle and like drum and bass music. And he used to go to all the, all the like more housey raves as well, like in the countryside in England in the 90s. Which I wish I could have gone to some of those because <laughs> like they sounded legendary. But I also was listening to a lot of post rock. So me and my friend had always had this dream of kind of doing a road trip in America. So we went out to California. I had just started doing, kind of putting out music and there was a little bit of traction. And I was like, well maybe I'll just put a tweet out seeing if there's any promoters who might be interested in, in booking a show or something. And I tweeted, gonna be in California in June, like promoters hit me up uh, kind of thing. And I, I think it was like two or three people got back. And I was like, okay, I've got a tour. <laughs> My first show in the US, it was at Broadway Bar in downtown LA. Yeah, there was like t like 10 people there, <laughs> it was like tiny. But I was like really excited because I'm playing in America, this is huge. I'm still very grateful to uh, to everyone who, who, who reached out. But that was cool and it was just great to meet a lot of musicians out here. And as soon as I came here, I could see how musical the city was. Um, and I've been living in London, which is also a very, very musical city. And that definitely kind of uh, made me want to move out here because I think everyone comes here to write records and it's such a collaborative place. I just started kind of playing around, making beats. I was trying to make drum and bass and all kinds of stuff, and it was just really bad and I had a lot of fun doing it. So I just kept doing it and putting stuff on SoundCloud. And after a while, some stuff got some traction. Mad Decent hit me up for a couple of remixes, which was crazy because I've been following those guys for a long time at that point. And you know, I was a big fan of Diplo. They messaged me for those remixes and I did them. After that, I kind of had like an early demo of this album, later became this album, Cyclical, which I put out with Mad Decent. Um, and I sent it over to them and they signed it. And I think that was the moment where I was like, oh, well, shit, I can actually kind of do this as a career. And it was like, wow. I get quite inspired when I hear a new instrument that I haven't heard before, because sonically it's, it's something new, which definitely helps, I think, the creative process. I'll build off. Uh, something sonically rather than like a concept a lot of the time. I think new instruments and traveling helps helps to do that quite well. I was in a bamboo forest in, in uh, Kyoto and I heard this in amazing like ethereal kind of uh, it sounded like a steel drum to me but like smoother and I was like I need to find where this is coming from so I was like roaming around trying to find it and it was this busker playing a hang drum which is kind of like a tuned uh, steel drum and then after he kind of paused I kind of I went and talked to him he spoke a bit of English. He could tell I was like really interested in the instrument and stuff. And I actually, I took my phone out and uh, field recorded him playing a little bit. And I told him at the time, I was like, do you mind if I sample this? And he was like, yeah, go for it. I'm working on a project right now. I'm really, really excited about it. And I'm going down to Patagonia for two months to kind of finish it off. I'm gonna kind of set up a little studio, to write a lot. And I think isolation is a really good thing for, for any creative person. I think you can really find out a lot about yourself and about what you're creating if there's just zero distractions. It's middle of nowhere, it's like three flights and two buses and like just uh, be surrounded by just amazing scenery and stuff and no one for miles around. It's gonna be weird, but it's gonna be fun. I hope people are inspired by my music. That's definitely what I hope to achieve. But I hope just people enjoy listening to it and as long as it makes someone feel something, then I'm, I'm happy.